Colby Gardner. He's a senior research fellow and director of Trace Initiative at the Stockholm Environment Institute. Good to have you on the program with us. Just 20 companies are the source of more than half of all single-use plastic items. Was this a surprise to you? Yeah, thanks very much, Rachel. Thanks for having us on. Um, a bit of a surprise, um, I, I think. I mean, we all know that global trade and production is often dominated by large multinational companies, but 20 responsible for 55% of the total production um, does demonstrate quite how much of the potential to turn this catastrophic problem around is in the hands of very few companies. And indeed, 90% of the total production is in the hands of 100 companies. And the other thing that's perhaps also surprising to many is that about 30%, if you look at market value of these companies, about 30% are in the hands actually of state-owned uh, companies, and particularly looking at Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, and China, uh, make up about 30% of that total production. And I just, before we came to you, I mentioned uh, plastic bottles and one-time use bags. But what are the worst products being made that are the most polluting? Sure. So food packaging, bottles for, for drinks, uh, film and packaging of things that we buy, you know, ready, ready food, but also almost all the food that we can buy these days, sometimes even vegetables, uh, film wrap, um, but also shopping bags, medical equipment. So there's a whole range, but they're, they're really some of the biggest. So what can be done to, I don't know if it's possible to even compel these organizations to change. I mean, is, is it possible to get them to make a change so that they're creating less polluting materials? So the answer has to be that it, it must be possible because this is a problem that's staring at us for a while. There are few issues uh, that attract so much attention as the plastic problem. Uh, the idea that many of us, most of us, perhaps all of us, have microparticles of plastic cursing through our veins should give us a uh, pause for thought, uh, a sufficient pause for thought. Now, the companies themselves clearly are not going to make change fast enough and on a scale enough that is needed. Um, they are increasingly aware. They're being made aware by consumer pressure. Consumer pressure alone will not solve this, though. What we need is concerted action by the finance sector. What we also show in this report um, is that a handful of banks provide uh, more than half of the financing for these companies, um, and a handful, 20 or so, uh, asset managers provide uh, some $300 billion uh, investment into these companies. So they need to uh, apply, apply uh, uh, pressure, but also governments. And there's a few basic things that can be done. Uh, require and demand and incentivize disclosure. Uh, how much single-use plastic is coming uh, from virgin uh, polymers straight from fossil fuels? Uh, at the moment, it's almost all of it. What we need to do is drive a transition towards a circular economy where we're taking our plastics, we're trying to reduce the use, we're reusing where we can, but where we need new plastics, that they're coming more and more from, uh, from recycled plastics. So put in place uh, circularity measures, the extent to which these companies are achieving a more circular-based economy into their reporting metrics, and also have science-based targets for actually transitioning away from uh, a dependence, an almost complete dependence on virgin materials uh, and towards a, a circular economy. But we need action across the board by governments. We need something comparable to the Paris Agreement for Climate Change, comparable to the Montreal Protocol uh, for addressing the ozone hole to tackle this problem. You know, we really have become a throwaway society, especially since the start of the pandemic. What can we do in our personal lives to change how much waste we create and then try to put more pressure on these companies to make a change? We can all do so much. And one of the anecdotes that sticks in my mind in this question uh, is a transition. And we've seen this across the world and we've seen it in countries that are actually afflicted by far greater levels of plastic pollution. Poorer countries who often uh, receive a lot of plastic imports from richer countries. It is action by individuals to say, no, this is enough. Uh, I will not take home all of this packaging with me from a supermarket. There was a lady in Ireland um, some years back who simply uh, undid her packaging in the shop uh, and left it behind um, at the responsibility of the supermarket. And that led in turn uh, to introducing a, a minimum price for plastic bags in Ireland, a small, a small transition. But we've seen the incredible pace of change in countries like Kenya that introduced far more uh, far-reaching legislation to ban plastics than many countries with far higher uh, per, per capita footprints. Australia, the US, most European countries outstrip um, most African and most 
uh, Asian and South Asian countries in terms of footprint, yet they've made much faster changes. So we can reject uh, single-use plastics. We can be much more discerning in what we buy. We can, of course, take reusable bags to the supermarket, but we can just be conscious that throughout our uh, our lives, when we go shopping, we do have these choices that we can make. And we can push back and say, enough. Uh, the responsibility for this uh, is not only with us, it has to get that we have to see change uh, through the companies that are, that are selling products that, that we want to buy. Well, hopefully we can make change because those pictures we're showing there of the plastics in the water are tr truly horrifying. Toby Gardner, thank you so much for your time. <laughs>